Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today uh, for another watercolor journal ideas day in this series. Um, we're on day like 40 something at this point. So thank you all for those who continue to watch and stick with me on this. Um, it's always something new and fun and interesting. I hope, at least for me it is. Um, so today we're gonna do some leaf practice. Now a, la, a couple of folks on here were talking about leaves and how they struggle with leaves and florals and everybody struggles with something. I used to struggle with leaves um, until I really sat down and practiced and kind of picked them apart. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do some leaf practice. Now don't worry about these colors here. These are actually for the painting yesterday, but um, I actually am probably gonna pull some of these colors for what we're gonna use today. So I have some sap green, I have some phthalo blue, I'll mix with my sap green, and we're just gonna do a bunch of different kind of greens, greens and green blues, or maybe grays uh, for leaves. So leaves can be done a lot of different ways. And sometimes at first it's, it would be good like in your journal to kind of make a map of, not a map, but like a glossary of different types of leaves that you might want to add to your paintings in the future. So I'm in my Bauhang sketchbook. I have my silver black velvet brush here, size eight. Uh, my core paints and I just have some sap green here. Well, this is sap green and a little phthalo blue, um, but you can use any green you want. And we're just gonna start with one. We're gonna start with the basic leaf. So that is getting up on the tip of your brush. So starting on the tip of your brush and dragging. So I don't know if you see that, there's a little bit of a stem there. And then as you're dragging, pressing down so you're getting the whole belly of the brush involved in the paper touching the paper and then slowly pulling up so that's a basic kind of one stroke leaf and then you can do the same thing with two strokes and so you can make it wider and more rounded by just adding a second stroke to it like that and what I think a lot of people struggle with when putting in leaves is leaving this little gap here um, to a stem or leaving a little bit of this little stem on the end when you're attaching it to something else. It's not always the case that you have to do that, but often that is what gives it a little space, a little breathing room, makes it look a little more organic rather than cartoonish. So again, so those two strokes, one stroke, depending on the size of your brush, your leaves will be smaller or larger. So if you pulled in a much smaller brush, like I have a size four here, your leaf is going to be much smaller, much thinner. Okay, so you might have to do two or three strokes with a smaller brush if you're trying to get that same size leaf, or it will allow you to make tiny little leaves. So same concept, just smaller, okay? So those are our one and two stroke basic leaves. Now let's talk about leaf structures. So leaf structures are when you have um, a bunch of leaves on a branch or a stem uh, coming off of it. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that and a bunch of different shapes as well. So leaves don't always have to be this shape they can also be sorry before we get into leaf structures they can also be rounded so you can have a very rounded shape leaf like this and you can also have um, a much longer thinner leaf so same concept as before long stem and you're just dragging it a lot longer so they can be nice and long and willowy you do want to make sure your brush is nice and loaded up. Otherwise you will start to get dry brushing on your leaves. So practicing this can be really helpful. Just the different shapes, whether you want to make a round leaf and you can always leave some white space in these as well. Long, short, having this in your arsenal to begin with is going to be really helpful. Okay. And now leaf structures here. Let's pull in some blue here. Let's make this a different color. I just pulled in indigo actually into this green. So it's a very, um, 
a very muted kind of, what would this be? Gray green color. Okay, so a leaf structure can be, I'll just give you one example. So here's your stem and you're gonna have leaves coming off of it. We're gonna do kind of simple one and two stroke type leaves. You're gonna come off the leaf and then they're going to be asymmetrical or um, diagonal to each other on the branch. So it's gonna go here and then here and then here and then here on this side, this side, and then we'll finish it off at the top with one, okay? So there's that type of leaf structure and they're kind of spread out. But then you can also do ones where they're diagonal to, or they're parallel to each other, parallel. So I'm just gonna actually make these much smaller, but I'm gonna put in my little stems ahead of time. So you can see they're parallel to each other. And this is where the little stem is gonna start. And I'm gonna make these smaller. And you'll see this gives you a whole different kind of look and feel. And then you can still do one at the top there. It's a little big, but so there's that. And then you would do the other side. Sorry, this brush isn't great for these tiny leaves. So I actually have to do two or three strokes to get the shape that I want. There we go. So there you have, and then I put this big one on the end, but it doesn't really go with the rest of the, the, the leaf structure. So we have these asymmetrical larger ones, these parallel um, smaller ones. And again, you can mix these up. You could have asymmetrical smaller ones, longer ones, that kind of thing. So there is another version of a leaf. Uh, you can also do more rounded leaves like a eucalyptus. So let's see where they cross over. So you have your branch here and let's say we're looking at these rounded leaves kind of on their side. You might have some that come out from the side like this that are rounded. And there might be another one over here but then you're gonna have some that come right across the stem and are foreshortened. And they're flattened and they're not quite in full side profile. Like this. So that is more like a eucalyptus type structure. And then you can always add in little drops of more color to give them some variation. All right, so there are three leaf structures and kind of three different ways to do leaves. Let's see if we can come up with one more. All right, so you can also do similar to this kind of more complex things. So let's get into some more sap green and phthalo. Um, you could do something where you have clusters. Oh, my book is falling off my table. Uh, so it's similar to the asymmetrical one. So maybe you have a leaf up top, a leaf, and then a leaf off a leaf. See how I did that there? So this comes off of the main structure and then one leaf comes off of another one. And you might have ones that come off in like sets of three. Again, you can change the shape of these if you want. Like that. And then you might also have something like this, but they're much tinier. So you can do like really long 
thin leaves. And all of these kind of make up different look and feel. And this is just a few that you can do of the many, many different ones that you could combine to make lots of different leaves and leaf structure shapes. So the things you can vary are the shape and size of your leaf. You can also vary how they're put together in a structure. And then of course, last but not least, but you can vary your color. So you can do lots of different colors all in the green family, but also mix it up and throw in some purples and browns and reds um, and that will give you more fall foliage colors and things like that. So there are some simple leaves for you to add to your uh, arsenal when you're going and painting leaves as well as florals. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Shana Searcy. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials. Follow me on Instagram and share this with a friend if you have someone else you think would like to join us on the watercolor journey. And I will see you for another watercolor journal page very soon. Take care, y'all. Happy painting.